So this video is going to talk about MHC1 uh, antigen processing and presentation. So MHC1 is a um, receptor complex found on the surface of cells that's involved in antigen presentation. So um, the question is, which cells? Because for MHC1 and MHC2, these receptors are found on different cells. And the answer is, um, MHC1 it's found on the, res uh, the surface of most cells in the body. Because, remember, what's the function of MHG1? It's to present peptides that come from the cytoplasm, present them to T cells, and these are to defend against viral infections. And which cells in the body can be infected by viruses? Pretty much every cell. Therefore, every cell needs this defense mechanism. The only cells in the body that don't carry MHG class 1 are erythrocytes, or red blood cells, most likely due to the fact that they're enucleated, and uh, therefore viruses don't tend to infect uh, red blood cells, since viruses usually need the nuclear machinery of a cell in, all, in order to replicate. So most cells in your body have MHC1, and so that means that right now in the cells, in your tissue, and your organs, whether that be your skin cells, your epithelial cells, your liver cells, your kidney cells, um, all your cells have these MHC1 complexes on their surface. And so what do they do with them? Well, we know that they're proteins in the cytoplasm that are broken down into peptides. We'll see that in the next slide. And those peptides are presented on MHC class 1. And if there's no infection, then you're, what you're presenting are self-peptides, which should not be recognized by T-cell receptors. If you have an infection in one of your cells, then the virus um, is going to make viral proteins, and the cell will try to grab a couple of those proteins, chop them up into small peptides, and present them on their surface to try to get help for T cells. Um, so let's talk about how this is going to happen. So if you have a, a tissue that's infected by a virus, let's say you have a, a bronchial infection or a gastrointestinal infection, um, or, you know, a skin infection, a, a viral infection somewhere in the body. How are we going to get help from T cells? So the, um, this starts off with dendritic cells. So um, dendritic cells are covered, I think, uh, in Chapter 3. Uh, there's a section in Chapter 3. It's also way back in Chapter 1. Dendritic cells are phagocytes. They love to phagocytose things. And they also love to get infected by things because they're really um, helpful in order to uh, show T cells this uh, infection. So dendritic cells, they live, where are they found in the body? Well, they're found in our organs, um, crawling around very similar to macrophages. So dendritic cells, they love to get infected by viruses, right? Um, but what they're going to do when they become infected is they're going to travel to um, the lymph nodes. They're actually going to take this infection. So dendritic cells, unlike macrophages, are migratory. Right. Macrophages crawling around this tissue are resident. They're going to stay here. They're going to try to eat all the viruses, although they're not going to win. They're going to release cytokines. Then dendritic cells, they get infected. They're going to carry that infection all the way up to the lymph node. So what's in the lymph node? T cells. So T cells are lymphocytes. And so we're, they're going to do part of their job, at least in the lymph nodes. So here's a T cell, or actually a bunch of T cells. And we'll talk about T cell development in the thymus. So once T cells leave the thymus, they become mature, they're naive T cells, they wander the body. Um, naive T cells wander the body looking for an infection. Where are they going to look for that infection first off? In the lymph node, right? So we'll see um, later how T cells enter the lymph nodes, but it's very similar to B cells, adhesion molecules, cytokines. So T cells are going to go into the lymph node with their T cell receptors, right, rearranged all sorts of ways that they have different shapes, they can recognize different peptides, and they're going to look for a match for their T-cell receptor. So here comes the dendritic cell. So it got infected in the organ and some tissue. It could be infect, you know, an infection in your, let's say, respiratory tract. So the dendritic cells underlying your uh, epithelial layer will become infected happily. Um, once infected, it will take that infection, um, that pathogen, through the lymph nodes into the lymphatic tissue. Um, and what's it going to do here? Well, it's going to take some of those viral proteins, chop them up, and present them to T cells. And this is a good thing, right? Because T cells, and these are again CD8 positive T cells, those are the ones that check MHC class 1. 
molecules. So uh, these T cells are going to see and test their T cell receptor to see if they bind. If they don't bind, that's okay. They'll go around checking other MHE1s. If not, they'll just recirculate through the lymph system, lymphatic system, back into the blood, circulate the body. Right? So all the T cells test their T cell receptors. And let's say one of them, right, the way it rearranged its alpha and beta chain, right, using VDJ recombination, using junctional diversity, its antigen binding site matches that peptide. So now this T cell has a way to recognize infected cells. So what's this T cell going to do? Well, it's going to undergo T cell activation, which we will cover later in a later chapter, how T cells become activated. But once that T cell becomes activated, it will clone itself, so lots of mitosis. So this is a clonal selection, mitosis, mitosis, mitosis. There's an army of these T cells. And now, once they're activated, they will re-enter the um, circulatory system, but now they will enter infected tissues. And so we know that when a tissue is infected, it's inflamed, inflammatory. Um, mediators, cytokines activate the endothelial layer of the blood vessels, so T cells know uh, there's an infection on the other side of that blood vessel wall. Let me go in there and see if I find a match. So the T cell will use its T cell receptor and check the peptides. So let's say it's checking that cell right there. Well, that's not an infected cell. That's a normal cell, and it has a self-peptide, and that T-cell receptor doesn't recognize that peptide. So that T-cell receptor will move on to the next MHC1. It'll check that MHC1. Doesn't recognize that. Moves on to this one. Aha! This is the one, this is the peptide that the T-cell receptor matches, because it recognized this first many uh, days ago in the lymph node. So this T-cell says, aha, I've been trained to recognize this peptide, so I know that this is a foreign peptide, that cell must be infected, so got to kill this cell. And this T cell will wander this organ, wander the tissue, killing infected cells. Um, and that will also be covered in a later chapter called T cell effector function, how a T cell actually kills um, infected cells. So this is the first part of MHC1 um, antigen presentation. The next video will talk about how the peptides are processed inside a in cell in order to be presented. But I wanted to show you this to, so that you can organize how you think about where the infection is occurring and where T cell activation is occurring. Right? T cells are being shown, naive T cells are being shown the peptide in the lymph nodes, but T cells are going to go do its job, the CD8 positive cytotoxic T cell, go, go and do its job in infected cells.